and I got him a wonderful job where he started making great money to do very little work. Actually, he was so lazy, I ended up doing most of the work while he fucking relaxed because he thought he should be a rock star and, that, and serving food and things was beneath him. I've never had that attitude. It's one of, the, one of the things that makes me the greatest, easily the greatest human being of all time. When I was on the ballot for mayor, I still volunteered for shows and tour tickets. Even when I could get comp tickets to shows, I didn't. I volunteer ushered and I did work in exchange for my free tickets. And I love serving people. I have no problem tearing tickets. I have no problem sweeping a floor. I'm not some fucking arrogant piece of shit like most humans. I don't have a fucking ego problem like most human beings. I'm not afraid to serve others. Um, that's why I make the greatest politician of all time. Um, I believe politicians should kiss your fucking feet. If they don't like it, don't run for fucking office, you fucking pieces of shit neo-Nazis. Anyhow, um, this story goes, I, I hope you've already figured out where their story goes. Uh, Johnny then gets his bandmates' jobs there. And Missy gets a job there. And Missy gets her friend's job there over the next months and months and months and months and months. Pretty soon, half the staff is Johnny, Missy, and their friends. But there's a problem. They're all Americans, which means they're lazy as shit. And they believe in getting money for nothing. So meanwhile, I care about the customers, so I have to pick up the fucking slack. The girls just want to watch... Um, um, the girls just want to talk about dating and smoke cigarettes outside while the customers wait for their fucking menus. And Johnny and his friends all want to be rock stars, so they think it's beneath them to serve customers or give a shit about anybody. Disgusting. Dear diary, we had to do a splice there. Par uh, pardon me, please. So, anyhow, Johnny O'Reilly and Missy O'Reilly, who, um, oh, their lives became immensely wonderful. They were making good money. They were doing easy work. They were having fun. They were working with their friends. Everything was great. Their lives were changed. Um, they started going to the Upright Citizens Brigade and all that jazz, and everything in their life became infinitely better thanks to one selfless person. Now, when I would point out to Johnny O, as we called him, when I would point out to Johnny O that... Um, you know, I got you this job and you being lazy and indifferent to customers reflects badly on me. It makes me look like a fucking asshole. It makes me feel guilty for getting you a job here. And your friends are also lazy. And it makes me look like a fucking jerk off because I kind of, I recommended you for the job. So now I look like a fucking dick. And you wouldn't want to fucking wait 20 minutes for your menu in a fucking restaurant, so you need to learn to do unto others. It's a pretty simple code. It's called fairness. And um, he didn't care. So um, they would just continue to be lazy and lazy and lazy. And I would bitch them out again and again and again because I was doing all the work. They would get paid to do no work. And I, but there was, whatever, 12 of them on the staff and one me. You should be able to guess what happens next. It's happened almost every job I've ever worked at. Every job I work at, I am the best staff member that anyone's ever seen. I work hard. I don't fuck up. I'm like a fucking superhero machine from the future. And I've always been that way. And how do you think others on staffs view that? That's right. They all view me with contempt because I'm a threat to their lazy empire. And um, so most of my coworkers get me fired from all my jobs. They have to. You can't have a guy who makes you look bad, because then your job's threatened. So my friends, who I had changed their lives forever, united to get me fired. How fucking sleazy is that? And this was a great job. And my life never recovered from losing that job, I don't think. I got other jobs, but, you know, lots of places you work at, the bosses are fucking assholes. The location of the job or the work, the fucking assholes, the fucking assholes. And also, I was one of the rare white guys still delivering food. Um, they started giving that job to Mexicans. Fuck paying them $5 an hour. And, um, I mean, the job was like a, a secret. It was a wonderful fucking job. And I loved everything about it. And so I lost 
tons of money. It was one of the more devastating things to ever happen to me because I don't think you know what it's like to make $50 an hour to set your own schedule and to do a job that's fun that you really enjoy and your customers love you too. Um, so uh, uh, I lost tons of money. After that, I was doing carpentry and stuff, but I wasn't getting 50 bucks an hour and setting my own schedule. And, um, but let me not digress too much. Let's focus on the story at hand. Um, so Brad, the manager, said, Christopher, you're a fucking great worker. He looked like, uh, he looked like Kevin Costner, an alcoholic co at Kevin Costner. And he said, uh, Christopher, you're a great worker, but I got, I got the rest of the staff saying, you got to go. I'm sorry to do this to you. And he fired me. Now to prove that my firing was fake, this is the only job I ever had where they rehired me two more times. I got fired three times from my bait because the day manager fired me. But then the night manager was like, what? They fired Christopher? He was the fucking only good worker we had on the fucking staff. The rest of these people are fucking lazy fucks. He rehired me. Then the staff pressured him. I don't remember all the details now, but uh, the staff pressured him and he ended up firing me. Then the third manager hired me. I was doing her handyman work and stuff like that. And um, he didn't, he was a fucking fucktard. And I stood up to him. Example, they fucking, they had fucking the tables. Whoever the handyman was who fucking repaired those tables was a retard because you go into a restaurant and there's screws sticking out of the top of the fucking goddamn table. That's a little rude. Hell, it's a fucking lawsuit potentially. And um, so one day I was telling him something. It was like a staff meeting. And he, of course, like most bosses, had ego problems. I think we should just take anybody with an ego and put them asleep forever. Let's get rid of them. Let's take Darwinism to its logical fucking destination. If we get rid of all the retards, the fucktards, start again. Okay? We tried letting these fucking retards and egotists uh, continue. Didn't work. So, uh, that piece of shit. Um, I called him a fucking moron in front of the staff. He's like, you're fired. And I gave my usual speech, I think, which is, um, you really can't fire me because you know what? You're not my boss. The customers are my boss and the customers are your boss. And the customers are the owner's boss because without the customers, you ain't got a fucking job. You fucking moron. And I emasculated them, humiliated them, and uh, whatever. Um, maybe they threatened to call the police to get me out. I don't know. That's happened a couple times. <laughs> because it's true. I'm not leaving. The I mean, if I leave, it's like abandoning children. The customers are stuck with fucking staff and fucking assholes who don't give a shit about them. And fucking managers don't give a fucking shit about the customers. Fucking assholes. I mean, this, the customer service in New York City is the worst you'll ever find on planet Earth. It's really bad customer service. Anywhere you go. Fancy restaurants, shitty restaurants. Um, so, um, I guess that's most of the story that I want to say. Um, do you understand how bad that is? They lost me my great fucking job where I was making fucking $50 an hour. I did everything to make their lives better. And so they destroyed my life in almost every situation of my life. That's what my best friends have done to me. I can give you thousands and thousands and thousands of stories just like this one. But this one's a real doozy because these guys had no life. I mean, some of my friends had some life. Johnny and Missy had no life when I fucking rescued them. They had no hope and I rescued those fuckers. I should have fucked Missy um, when she was 16, but I was sworn to celibacy. Um, I, I should stop being a nice guy. Don't be as nice as me. Don't be as wonderful as me. It's a dead end. Um, I know, I always knew it was a dead end, but my only alternative is to be a fucking asshole like everybody else. And that's in some ways worse than being fucked over every day. Um, remember, just kill all fucking humans. And uh, Missy and Johnny now uh, own a very successful karaoke bar on Avenue A where they make shitloads of fucking money, can have all the drinks they want. And um, they are the rare people who admit to their friends and others that um, they pretty much owe it all to me. And yet 
they still treat me like fucking garbage. Sometimes they give me free drinks, but otherwise treat me like fucking garbage. Because someday you're going to learn. If there is only one word to describe the human beings, there's only one word even in the fucking ballpark. Evil. And the second word to describe humans, and it's miles, miles, miles in second place. Retards. Somebody kill me, please. Every day of my life has been torturous hell. And you know that because I've wanted to leave this planet since I was five. I'm the most talented motherfucker any human has ever met. I'm the nicest person any human being has ever met. I'm the most wonderful, selfless person of all time. The, the most honest person of all time. The most intelligent person of all time. People have been telling me I'm good looking my whole life. Thousands of women have hit on me. Why would a five-year-old who has everything going for his future want to die? Answer, because I was smarter than everybody else. And it only takes to the age of five before you realize the human race are fucking brainless fucking retards. It took me to the age of five. It's like, these people believe there's a dude floating in the sky? That's fucking retarded. These people think a fat motherfucker in a nice red suit hits every chimney on earth in one night and then squeezes down that fucking tight chimney? That's the fucking stupidest fucking thing I've ever fucking heard. You don't need to be 10 years old to figure that shit out, people, unless you're fucking semi-retarded. And, uh, and everything was like that. I saw, I, I can distinctly remember being five years old, six years old, and watching the adults and going, these fucking assholes have no fucking clue what they're doing. They act like they're in charge. They act like they know what they're fucking talking about. And they don't. And now, for those of you who've reached your 30s or your 40s, you now see that five-year-old Christopher Brodeur was smart as a fucking whip. Because when you were a fucking teenager, you thought adults knew what they were doing. Then when you became an adult, you realize none of them have a fucking clue what they're doing. And it's sad that I was right about every single thing when I was five years old. And I even knew it was all downhill from there. I was like, I don't want a part of any of this shit. These humans are fucking stupid assholes. They fucking treat each other like shit. They fucking use each other. They're selfish pieces of fucking shit. Get me out of here. And it's been all downhill since then. Every year of my life has been worse than the worst moment of your life. The worst moment of anyone's life. Ever. I would trade places with Anne Frank in one fucking split second. She was put out of her pain and misery at the age of 15. And she didn't have that much pain and misery before the age of 15. Um, again, I say the only difference between my life and a train wreck is that a train wreck lasts five seconds long.